All right, guys, so the sanding is done again. Uh, so much sanding. Um, we're actually gonna start prepping for paint tonight. Um, kind of exciting, sanding's done. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe everything down with acetone first. Uh, really, we're gonna concentrate on the bottom of the holes and there's a bird in here right now, of course. Uh, I'm sure he's gonna poop on the boat, so I'll have to wash that later too. But we intend to do one more coat of the Total Protect Barrier Coat. We're gonna let that tack up to a thumbprint consistency, and then we're gonna do a coat of the Sea Speed out of Texas, and that is a Siloxin paint, I believe it is. I'll double check. We'll put it in the description below uh, for the video here. Uh, friends coming in to help us spray. Uh, not sure if he wants to be on camera or not, so we might have to cut out some sections of it. We'll try to get some different views so we can uh, still give you guys a good show here. But uh, wish us luck and uh, stay tuned for the show. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, we're going, I went with an inch and a half above the designed waterline. Uh, that's where our bottom paint's going to be. Um, not sure if this is going to float higher or lower in the water. Uh, we are adding weight because we're adding length, but we're also adding buoyancy. So. Uh, it's hard to really say um, if we end up an inch and a half, even an inch out of the water with our, uh, our bottom paint, I'd be more than satisfied with that. So I think an inch and a half is going to be a happy medium. So if you do love the longer lengths, even if it is off a little bit, if it's got a little bit of a curve or a sag to it, mm -hmm. because it's over a longer stretch, you probably won't you see won't it. You won't notice it. You won't see it. So we've already taped the water line. Yep. So the, the water line is actually two inches higher than the designed water line. Uh, not two inches, sorry. An inch, inch and, and a half, half higher than the designed water line. Um, the bottom paint we're using is white as well as the paint for the tunnel. So it shouldn't really make a difference that we're going a little bit higher and we have a little bit more protection just in case uh, our flotation varies because we did change the plans. Right. So that's kind of the thought behind it. So inch and a half above the water line. So we're just taping plastic. Yep, we're going to use plastic and? on everything below the water line and I'm going to use rosin paper on the deck just so we can walk up and down it without slipping and sliding. And uh, yeah. yeah, simple enough. Pretty simple. So tonight prep and then if all goes well, the weather will cooperate and tomorrow we will spray. So. And then after it's mixed and induces, we can thin it up to 10% after that. So as you can see, the Total Protect laid down awesome and we highly recommend if you can afford it or if you have it, 
to go with spraying this Total Protect. Otherwise, you're gonna have a crazy texture and be pretty upset with the outcome. If you go with rolling it on instead of spraying. After we finished spraying the Total Protect, we moved on to the C-Speed and it was only a five to eight minute induction period on this. So once that was done, we were off and running. It said to build it up to five to six mils, which we know is only about two contractor trash bags thickness. And the C-Speed came with a gauge that is just obviously wrong. And if you notice, all the notches are exactly the same. <laughs> so one through six here, everything is the same. So we're going to let them know about that. Unfortunately, we couldn't use the thickness gauge that came with the C-Speed paint. We did use the appropriate amount that was calculated for five to six mils of coverage for the surface area of our boat. So we are pulling the tape this way with the boat, if that makes sense. Back on itself. <laughs> yeah, back on itself. So instead of like ripping it straight off, at like a 90 degree angle. Especially when the paint's still green, it'll, uh, it might have a tendency to flake that paint out and, and kind of screw up your tape line. So if you fold it back on itself, it almost cuts the, uh, the paint as a comb. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to mess up this paint. <laughs> really? <No. laughs> this looks so good. I'm, I'm satisfied with the way that came out. It's not perfect, but you know, for a first time boat builders, this is, this is pretty good, I think. All right, so just a quick walk around to the boat here. And Miss Cassie, the lovely Miss Cassie. <laughs> Here's our boat. All right. Oh, it's so silky smooth. It's, it's very, very nice. So there are a few imperfections in it. Nothing too crazy. Uh, there's a couple little spots where I didn't actually notice there was a like air bubbles, uh, like little voids, like they're super small. So I'll have to fill that with something as we go. Um, 
um, all of our nice crisp lines up to the bow. And then we gotta still paint the tunnel and all that. So next, in the next painting will be the tunnel. I'll show you guys my screw up right here. I'll do it. Ah, so my screw up right here, guys. Yep, that was me. Fail. The tape must have come loose and it got pressed back down and it was over my original tape line. So, uh, but when I sand out the uh, that edge, it should pop. It should blend right into the other paint. So, but it's the bottom of our boat. Looks beautiful. One side. And Cassie can cut this however she feels. Or maybe two I sides. Maybe I won't. And our canvas drop cloth to try to keep some of the overspray down. It worked. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, we really don't have any issues with overspray. I didn't even move my truck out of the driveway. We didn't have any issues. So. The stuff is definitely weird. Yeah. And I'm just gonna. Sorry. So we chose sea speed because we don't want to be painting the bottom of our boat every year. Um, that's the main reason. The second reason is it's supposed to be non-toxic to the sea life and right. obviously we love the ocean so why would we want to hurt it? <laughs> and um, nothing is supposed to be able to grow on it and if it does it supposedly knocks off around eight knots yep. and if anything does grow on it you can just kind of like brush it off with your hand or a yep. rag. So yeah uh, we, we will get some growth if the boat's just sitting around uh, that's kind of inevitable uh, from what I was told is you take uh, either an old piece of carpet a rag or a very soft brush and just wipe it down you know you dive on the boat wipe it down when you're in the water swimming whatever. Um, a blade of paints is what typical boats use so it's a toxic chemical because my arm's getting oh. tired uh, a blade of paint is toxic it's uh, usually a copper based paint and that leaches into the water as the year goes so all these boats in the water that have this ablative paint are theoretically you know poisoning poisoning the, the water right? it, it's probably very minimal considering what 70 percent of the earth is water yeah but at the same time you know we want to do our part so uh, we're, we're safe for the environment now and as well as that we don't have to touch it for 10 years 10, which is 10 plus huge. years which is huge because every year you take your boat out of the water at the end of the season you have to sand that paint down reapply and then as that paint builds up to a certain thickness you actually have to like sandblast the whole yeah. boat or you sit there sanding for three or four days um, so from experience it's not a fun thing I have to keep switching, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You covered most of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to give this uh, product a try. Obviously, it's going to be another year, year. plus year yeah. plus before we can actually give it a true test. Um, but It was expensive, but if you actually like put the cost into like Correct. the overall with like ablative paints. So if we get the 10 plus year longevity out of this paint, we're actually half of the price of the ablative paints to repaint every year. Right. Minus the labor on top of that. So we won't have to touch it. All we have to do is power wash the boat at the end of the year and we're good to go. Ablative paints, you have to sand them, reapply every year. That's time and effort. So, I mean, financially, it's well worth the investment if it works. So there's the, there's the whole thing. We're so smart. <laughs> So 
I'm really terrible at taping, so Carl has taken over that duty. <laughs> oh, you're alright. <laughs> no, I overthink it and then I want to hit every single dot. Oh, did you get a happy medium? Yeah, I don't do that. And that's why it's wavy all the time for me. Action. That's always crooked. Maybe your head's crooked. It is. A little bit. Action. 